All right, so we're going to get started. Uh, I am currently downloading the video client software that will allow me to join the room, hopefully. What was the um, hashtag for this? Okay. Hashtag together. So uh, the the so here's why I, I gave a description of this earlier to Mitch, um, and I'm going to give it again now. Uh, so part of my philosophy here is the reason that things like Facebook are so successful with kind of Gen 3, Gen 4 type people uh, is because they've put together the entire experience. You get content creation, so you can post things and book various different types of things photos and recipes and blogs and whatever, um, short statuses, you get content consumption. Um, so you get a feed, which is usually algorithmic and usually not controllable by the user, but you get a feed of, hey, here's stuff that's interesting to you today. And Facebook has put, you know, a combination of news and, you know, content created by other people that are your, quote, friends um, in, in kind of that experience to make it all work. Um, and then you get content interactions, which is liking something or resharing something or commenting on something. Um, there's usually threaded, uh, you know, stuff involved in that as well. Um, okay, so I'm actually trying to join the room so I can show, show you my current experience that I'm using on my site, because um, I think it might be useful for everyone to see. Dear, where is it? Schedule grid, hub join, see if it works. Okay, I am going to share my screen. I'm also going to mute myself. Hopefully, and everybody, oh good, everybody sees my screen. I'm going to hide video, hopefully. Good. So, this is my website, okay, and I use Known for my website. So I can compose in here content, but I can't really consume other people's content or interact with other people's content without copying and pasting URLs, right? Um, so I also use this piece of software called Nextcloud. Nextcloud is a fork of OwnCloud, which is a kind of a self-hosted Dropbox type of thing, um, but it has the ability to have plugins that you can use um, for building other apps. And one of the apps is a, a newsreader. So here uh, is a newsreader that I have, and it's using RSS and Atom feeds. I can subscribe to and consume content. Um, and I'm going to talk about all the problems with my experience in a moment, but I'll just show you what I have so far. So here's Ben, right? Um, and this is his, his stream of his known stuff. Um, and let's see if there's something in here. Oh, here's a cool post that he's got. Uh, here's the entire Indie Web Social Graph of Independent Websites as queryable data. So I can click to view it. I created a plugin for this. So now I can do things like Indie Web Interaction. So I can say I want to reply to this or bookmark it or like it or repost it. So I'm going to actually, uh, let's, let's reply to it. So this opens up Quill, which is something that Aaron made. Um, and I'm already logged into it. You can see I'm going to be replying to it. And I can say, yeah, it is really pretty amazing, isn't it? And then I'll post it, and then it'll go to my website eventually. And there we go, right? I've got it replied. You'll see it there, right? So I've done the whole the whole dance, right? I have I can create content. So I also have in my next cloud this Quill link, and if I click on it, and my screen is a little bit behind. Um, I have it embedded inside my next cloud experience. So uh, I have the ability to create content from Quill, consume content through Nextcloud News, and interact with it through the plugin that I made. Now, this does capture all three parts of the user experience, but it doesn't do it in a particularly nice way. There's a bunch of things about this that I don't like. So, um, and I think it might be interesting to uh, talk about these individual people, like if people in the room have things that they are doing now that might be better. Um, I don't like that all of my content is feeds and that all of those feeds are, some of them I want to see everything in order. Some of them I just like, I like an algorithm, frankly. Um, some sites that I like, I don't want to remember to go visit their website every day. 
um, to see what's on the front of the site. I just want to have like a reading list, right? I want it to algorithmic, algorithmically somehow decide, here are the five or six articles from this site. Like The Verge is my canonical example because I love The Verge. It's an amazing website with lots of good content. The problem is too much. It's like a, you know, 50, 60 articles a day. And most of the time I spend just skimming through my news feed and just going mark all red and maybe bookmarking two or three of them to read. Um, so that's one problem. Uh, and then from a composition standpoint, my personal website doesn't support as many things over Micropub as I'd like because Known doesn't currently support things like recipes or um, uh, reviews or a lot of different types of content other than just very basic stuff over Micropub. Um, so that's a problem. So anyway, it's my notion. My notion is people should have this nice integrated experience. And if they can, more people will use it because it's easy and interesting. Delightful. Um, is anybody else solving this problem themselves yet? For themselves? How do people consume well, content? I think, I think the issue is really the, so big. So there's, there's, yeah. the, because there's three parts of the right. different challenges you have to yes. overcome. So it's, uh, Obviously, much more difficult than if uh, yeah. you need to get a one part of it. Yeah. Um, I, I do think like the Microdot blog actually yes. is trying to handle a couple parts of the experience, if not all of them actually. Yeah. Because you can subscribe to a Microdot blog feed, which is going to show you micro blogs of people, and you can just see. And actually, for me, it replaces Instagram and it replaces Twitter in many. Not replaces, but it acts as those two things. Yeah. So that's two thirds of the, well, two fourths of the um, types of content that I think most people get: microblogs, photo feeds, and then you have like news, mm -hmm. right? Which is like another thing. Um, and was, oh, and then like, I think Facebook is, is something else entirely, and I'm not sure, entirely sure what. Mm -hmm. um, so. I don't know. Does anyone, how do people discover their content right now? Like, how do you, do you use feed readers? Uh, I do. I mean, I don't discover content right. with them. You just read whatever is in your feed. Just, oh, this thing has a feed, and I'd like to put it in my feed. Yeah. It's, it's very, you know, there's like six things in there. Right. And there, it, they just never bring me more. No. Unless somebody recommends something in one of those posts. And then I look at that and I say, oh, I want to add this too. Right. But it's um, discover is, is tricky because, I mean, if you aren't careful, you're discovering, you know, every 30 seconds. Yes, too much discovery. And, uh, and then your feeds get over full yeah. and then you stop reading them and then right. you're like, oh, good, new platform, micro.blog. I can right. follow everybody. Yeah. And then, you know, so for a while I'm like, I'm seeing everything more yeah. or less right now. And I'm, I'm, but even that suddenly is starting to tip. Yeah. And I'm going to have to unfollow people. Yes, which is tough. Mm -hmm. um, so anyone else like uh, who, who has, who is in the ecosystem of the indie web that ways you, that you currently do this? You have a website. Right, and you use Micropub, I'm assuming. Do you have your own website that you built from scratch, or is it like on, okay. And you support Micropub, and then you use Micropub clients. Yes. Did you write your own Micropub client, or are you uh, using yeah, Quill? Yeah, multiple ones. Okay. <laughs> uh, my main use is I actually use the chatbot mainly that I made. Oh, okay. So I mostly, it's mostly going for microblogging type things. It's like I just say post, and then type it into the chat, and then that's it. Um, so that's, that's, I use that because that's literally the fastest yeah. I've ever found for actually posting. Immediately. Yeah. Exactly. And the photos I use, I just share the photos to the chatbot and it realizes it's a photo. Um, nice. But then that is completely anti what you're looking at because it can only exist as the chatbot. Well, I guess it could actually, it could do reading and discovery and stuff yep. as well, but uh, so I would say that my scope of it at the moment. Right. Um, Do you use feed readers at all? Yes, I just I use a feed reader for but, uh, just for RSS news stuff, but not uh, really any indie web related stuff. Got it. So you, do you you know do you follow people's websites in there as well, like individuals' websites, or is it mostly just news? It's mostly just news. Yeah, just yeah. I I just not got around to yeah. looking through people's websites properly. I guess. 
I use the uh, Chrome plugin, uh, Omnivir, as yeah. well as the stuff. Yeah. That's Grant wrote that. Yeah, yeah. What, what, what reader is this that's on the screen? So this is Nextcloud News. Okay. So Nextcloud is a big thing, right? It's, it's enormous. And it's not like a super simple thing to get started with necessarily, but realistically when you install it by itself <laughs> with no plugin, so all yeah. you have to do. Yeah, all you have to do is pick one of these 900 things. Yeah. Um, install, sync, extend. Yeah. It, it's pretty cool, right? It's a, the idea is it's your own cloud that you self-host. So you get Dropbox-like capabilities. So I have file sync and share and all this stuff. And then there's plugins for doing a bunch of other things, right? So news is one of them, and that's what I use. I used to use Feedly, and before that I was using Google Reader, and before that I was using Google. And then I've had a couple other things in between. The problem is these things keep getting killed. So yeah. um, I, I've decided, like, I want to only use things I can self-host so they don't die. Yeah. Um, Feedbin is nice as well. Yeah. Um, so what are, like, the first five indie web projects that come to mind? If I say, you know, what are, what are the popular things that people use? Like, is Gnome and WordPress and... I would say probably WordPress is yeah. number one. Right, and other and other and other. And then there's just a bunch of other things. Yeah. Kind of in that, Quill's pretty popular, I think. Uh, Bridgy is pretty popular. Bridgy, sure. Okay. None of those things are a reader. Nope. And what's the core of your indie web experience? Right. It's reading. a reader. It's yeah. reading. I agree. And for the vast majority of social internet users, reading is almost all they do, and publishing back into it is almost completely Small. accidental. Right. Yeah. Well, and that's the other thing. We're all sitting here together in in <clears throat> indie web. We talk about our websites. We're talking about all the things we're putting on our websites. And none of it matters if no one's reading it, yeah. right? Like, so I agree with you. I think, like, to me, there are there's something called Woodwind that's a reader. Yeah. yeah. Um, there are a couple other readers out there, but none of them has really, frankly, struck me personally as like, that's great. I love this. It's awesome. Um, I don't know why that is. So, what, what are you? Uh, is there anything out there that is not indie web that's like that would be the end goal for trying to become like Facebook? So. Yeah. yeah, we're trying to become Facebook. I mean, as far as the reader experience, yeah. yeah. I think even better than that, though. For me, like, the thing that's, that I personally see, there's different types of content. There's content that is, like, my friends and my family. And I generally want to see all that stuff, and I want to see it all in order, right? And it's usually short posts and photos. And I want to be able to interact with that, and I want to see it almost in a timeline view. Right? And then there's news, where I want it to be pretty algorithmically driven, where it's like there have been 25 posts today. Like if Apple announces a new thing, right? there's inevitably like half the sites I follow are going to all write about it. Right? And I don't want to see every single news source about that. I want to see like two. Right? Um, if it's my friends talking about it, I want to see it. But if it's you know, just five people all regurgitating what happened in some press release, I don't want to see all of that. But I want my reader to know that I care about that stuff. Um, and then I want to be able to comment on that and share it back out to my friends and let them interact and we can have a conversation about it, right? And Facebook is actually pretty damn good at that, mm -hmm. um, except for the part where you have control over the algorithm, yep. um, which we don't. So that's my kind of ideal like end game is starting at the reader and mostly reacting. Uh, with some writing as well. But I think people people are writing more on the internet today than ever before, but it's almost exclusively reactionary, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. Or short posts. Yeah. Reacting mm -hmm. to something. Right. <laughs> Commenting on... It's not politically <laughs> reactionary, necessarily. Right, yeah. No, Although but like... Reactive, maybe, is the word? Yeah, reactionary? Yeah. I mean, oh, I can't believe this happened. Right. Blah, 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 blah. Yeah, especially this year, it's mostly like, oh my gosh, what's going wrong with this? Um, yeah. But... Anyway, that's, I mean, it's true, like, when, you know, blogs first really got going and, there, and RSS, you know, mm -hmm. became a thing, and it took me forever to explain RSS to regular people, yeah. and I, I wasn't especially techie, but, you know, the notion that you could really get some content delivered to you, the kind of content you want yep. to see won't just, like, accidentally cross, you know, right. you can keep up with something, and especially if you're trying to do it kind of a some kind of work in a field, following the people writing about that would be important. And so that was great, you know, um, people, people, you know, a few people, it was still hard to, then Google Reader came, and I mm -hmm. think that, 
I never had the experience of really using yeah. it except as the back end of an mm -hmm. RSS reader, so I don't know how regular people... <laughs> I was people, mostly that way, too. Yeah. Uh, you know, experienced Google Reader, but as you say, it went away. And so, you know, now it is like they follow, it's just they go and look at what are the trending things on Facebook. That's their RSS. But I think the social networks have done us, a, the silos especially, have done us a favor by making some ideas and concepts familiar. Like follow is a thing that people know. Like trying to explain right. RSS to someone is really difficult. Right. But now you feel like it's like following a website. Oh, I get that. Like right. instantly, right? That's what it right. is. Right. Subscribing to a feed is a very nerdy way of Yeah, it. subscribe to an RSS feed is what? Follow. But to follow a website or follow a topic on a website. You didn't add that. Right? <laughs> I think that, and then like liking and commenting, interaction now. It used to be like if you blogged about something, you just blogged about it, but there's no way to like find all of the people who are blogging about a topic. And now it's like we have hashtags. We have, you know, we, the social networks have done us that favor, but we need to kind of take those things back. And I just don't, I'm, I'm trying to think like, is the reader the place to start? I think it is. I kind of think so too, which yeah. is surprising. Because the best thing we have is an RSS feed reader. Like, I mean, that's a far cry for far cry. Facebook. Yeah. I, I've tried multiple times to use it and, only following maybe 10 sites, and like you said, with like Mashable yeah. or um, Ars Technica, like there's so many posts that you you just drown in them. Yep. Yeah, it's true. I mean, I, I'm still using Reader um, at, Reader. with Feed Wrangler as the, mm -hmm. the service, the service. Um, and I, maybe because I'm just, you know, I, I, uh, I'm resistant to change, you know. So a creature of habit, as the Adam is I'm a creature of habit. Okay. Um, that I should, um, but I don't subscribe to like things like Mashable on that because it would be pointless. Like right, I can too much. remember to go to Mashable or five people that I already follow will say, go to see this story of Mashable or whatever. But, but for those, those really good blogs that are personal and, you know, either a topic I'm really interested right. in or a point of view that I really admire, um, and they post like maybe once a week, that's the readers for that. Yeah. <laughs> Have you seen the new version, dig.com? Dig oh, no, I haven't. Yeah. So, well, it's just a new site, but they have a little widget, which is really useful. Uh, just, uh, you just log in with your Twitter, and it loops through all the links that anyone on your feed has put, and just says, here's like the top oh, right. stories that people are tweeting about. Oh, yeah. That you know, not just the world knows. So it means that it's like quite focused towards you. So it's actually really nice. They don't. No, but that's an interesting concept. Like, if you follow someone with an indie website, yeah. you can see all their bookmarks of, right, or their reposts, or things that they've liked and so on. And it's conceivable that if you know that, you know your social graph, right, based on some of the work that, that Ryan has done, that would be kind of a really cool way to create a reader and be like, here's all the people you, quote, follow, and you're discovering the content that they like. And if you're following them, odds are that you have some sort of shared interests, or at least you'd be, you know, and the things that are shared more often bubble up, right? Mm -hmm. um, so that's a really interesting thought, because I've been thinking, RSS Reader is not the model I want. It just happens to be the best option that I have today, but I, I, I don't like it. It's not correct. And there's, I think it's fairly obvious that uh, most people are, do not want just a big... Okay, well, yeah, yeah, they don't they don't like RSS readers, even though Facebook is fairly similar, it's somehow better to for a normal person. Well I think part of it too is like different types of content and interactions get displayed special, right? Mm -hmm. Which is one of the things that I like is if someone bookmarks something that shows or or likes something on Facebook, that shows up as an item in my newsfeed, but as your friend liked this. Okay. And on Twitter it's the same thing. Your friend <laughs> reshared this. Yeah. That's that's a good thing. And we have a bunch of different post types that we are annotating with microformats. And imagine a really cool reader where it was like all of your friends that you were following and the different types of things that they're liking and bookmarking and interacting with and replying to each other. You could do a much better presentation than Facebook or Google Reader or an RSS reader or whatever. Um, so I think the reader is definitely the, the thing. So do we forcibly adopt Woodwind? Or? <laughs> Woodwind is or, actually pretty cool. Or do we forcibly adopt the reader in known, which is uh, not cool and barely working? And I'll tell you what, Ben's never going to touch it. No, Ben, so. is, ben explicitly has said that he's planning on removing it from known. That, 
<laughs> well, we should, we should talk to him about it. I mean, I understand why. Right? Um, well, because he can't support it. Because right. his business much. Stuff isn't built yeah. to support it. Right. Because his business is not an anyway business. Yeah. But okay. Um, it's an education business. Yes. And that's fine. Um, yeah, but I mean, I don't want to start a reader from scratch. I don't either. <laughs> well, I mean, do I want to? Actually, yeah, I kind of like to, but I don't have time. Like, uh, yeah, that is a good <laughs> right. Who has time? Actually, yeah. In fact, I did start one, but I don't have time. Yeah. yeah. So we'll just have to get Manson to uh, make the Microsoft blog consumption interface really, really great. Yeah. Uh, yeah. He's got a, he's got he's a got lot got of a free small time, time right Yeah, he's tons of free time <laughs> launching a business. Um, yeah, uh, are there other indie web readers out there than would have been? Uh, I'm sure there's a wiki page. So one thing to consider before we go searching for an existing solution is kind of um, what features or functions we want our solution to yeah. fulfill. Yeah. Um, and then maybe finding an existing solution that matches that. Yeah, that's a good point. So we do have a, a Etherpad. I haven't actually used it at all yet, really. Um, look at that. Okay, somebody has actually taken some notes. Good. Um, that's a good point. Uh, maybe we should create a, a section on, um, oh, and everything's flowing in. Look at that. Um, what do we like in a reader? Okay. Uh, so one of the things I asked, the social network kind of feature of following, this is getting back to what Ryan was talking about earlier. He was trying to kind of do it in an emergent way, which I think is smart. Um, but it would be kind of nice if there was a way to explicitly state, like in your quote reader, these are the people that I follow and that I care to follow. I may not have interacted with any of their content yet, but I might, I, I am explicitly interested in doing so. So I think that would be like, exactly, the social network feature of following. Um, I think it needs to, uh, yeah, recommendations things people might like or things that your, your people you follow have interacted with. Right? Mm -hmm. So like content discovery through your social network, right? Like I'm following Gene and Gene liked this article on microblogging that was written mm -hmm. on TechCrunch. And, uh, you know, I have five other friends that have also liked that article. Oh, cool. Maybe that should bubble up into my quote feed. Um, yeah. I mean, one thing that I think Facebook lacks and, you know, and one of the many things, but they, um, when somebody likes something, the like level, uh, you know, represents such potentially microscopic yeah. amount of interest. Yeah. And especially like when my friends are liking Amazon or right. so those yeah. pages, I'm like, well, that doesn't help. I don't help. care. I don't yeah. care. Uh, but that allows, you know, Facebook to serve me these basically sponsored posts. And I try to say to people, Stop. Start unliking all these. Don't things. like brands. Don't like yeah. brands unless it's like, like people. You know, it's a it's a really seriously small brand that you care about. But when you like Disneyland or you like Amazon, all right, I already know. Like, I don't need to know more about that. I'm not definitely. And I, it was really yeah. bad during the election. Yeah. <laughs> because people would like, well, you know, a, a politician, and then those people's those things would keep. Yeah, I out. think. Um, a uh, so separate notion of following for non-people <laughs> entities. Right. So we have our own brands, politicians, which are definitely not people. Yeah, um, I generally see Facebook's um, way of aggregating information. Because, like, I always want to see what my friends actually post themselves. Yes. Like, that's really the only thing yeah, I that's actually the most important want to thing. see. Yeah. yeah. Right. They tell me and when they've they liked somebody else's post. Yeah. But, and, like, and yeah. it'll be like some random person that they know, I don't know, and yeah. they'll be just as big as all yeah. the, like, original, like, content that yeah. they made. And, like, like one is in a uh, comment that says, nice. Yeah. Yeah. Or no <laughs> or they reacted to something yeah. that I don't want to read about because it was like a bad yeah. Yeah, news item. Like, yeah. 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 So, yeah I, There's not even a way to filter yeah. it. Yeah. I think, I think, I think that's true. Required is filters to be able to say, like, maybe you want to discover stuff, but I personally wouldn't. I just want yeah. to see the actual thing. Yeah, but to me, like, the discovery, uh, it's almost separate, right? Like, I want a stream of my friends. 
Yeah. And I want that to be my friends, short posts, photos, yeah. right? Yeah. Maybe they're check-ins, but probably not. That might be too much noise. Yeah, right. I think you definitely still want to filter that. Right. Even further, if you, know, if you just had the option to switch everything off apart from photos, then you'd have Instagram. If you right. had to switch everything off apart from text, you'd have Twitter. Twitter. Exactly, which I think is kind of cool. And then you could even have, like, to me, this, the <coughs> social discovery stuff is built on likes and bookmarks, right? And that, I don't mind having that in the feed, potentially, but I could see that being a separate feed. Yeah, or if it's at least, like, smaller right. so that you could scan past it easily. Right. Five of your friends liked this post on whatever. Mm -hmm. And then it's, you know, and then you could pop it open. So I've, I've uh, and it just landed in Known, which makes me very happy. I've added an extension. So I've, Known now supports JSON feed, which I know is some people aren't into, whatever, I don't care. Um, <laughs> known now supports JSON feed, and I added an extension to it, which includes like a bookmark, a, like all of the basic microformat type interaction stuff to enable this. So if there are consumers of JSON feed, they can actually do things like that and say, oh, five of your friends that you're following on JSON feed like to this post, right, or bookmark this post. Um, but that's entirely possible with HFeed or not so possible easily with RSS or, or Atom. So, I mean, yeah, there's enough crap that you can fold into RSS or Atom. That yeah. There's probably a way to do it. I mean, we also, we, all of us in this building, uh, yeah. I have uh, maybe not explored adequately all of the stuff built by, you know, our, our hated opponent's team linked data. <laughs> um, and some of it's good. Yeah. You know, so uh, like for instance, there's the access control thing, mm -hmm. which if IndieWeb, if Team IndieWeb has done any real thinking about access control, I've missed it. Um, there is some stuff on the wiki and have been some experiments with posts that are only meant for certain people, yeah. right? Um, it exists, and in fact, I think Ryan and Aaron have like a set of posts that only each other can see. <laughs> I think that's the extent of it. <laughs> there may be a couple other people who have done it, but not me. Yeah, yeah, because that has to be a part of uh, any reading experience as well. The readers are going to have to go around saying, hi, this is who's reading. I think eventually, yes, but I don't think that's a, to me, that is not a minimal viable product kind of necessity. Like, uh, well, what, what's MVP? Uh, to, to me, the at the highest level, what I would like is a way to, from my website, follow people, right? Or from their website, like be on someone's website and click a follow button and have that somehow add them to my reader and then get this kind of timeline of, of my indie web friends, basically, mm -hmm. um, with content and some notion that five of your friends liked this feed or this thing, that would be kind of nice to have. If I have that, that's a really good start, right? Um, I think the next thing after that would be starting to fold in like, okay, a separate column or a separate view for non-friend content, so right? you might content be discovery. Interested. You might be interested in X, Y, Z. Yeah, because right. the one thing that kills me about going on Twitter or Facebook is you get all of these articles where they're like, but oh, you probably want to see this. Right. It's, it's built into your existing feed. Right. And it's like you, you just want to see your friends. Right. But you, you might be interested in that content. Yeah. But they're not really giving you the option to right. do that. They're forcing you to be I that think content. Getting past that point where we, you know, to me, knowing that these are separate timelines. Right. So you can literally, thing. like, within the UI, having yeah. two completely separate tabs of, yeah. or, or filters of, you know, here's the people you're following, and then, you know, there's, like, a tab that's, like, suggested. Yeah. Yeah. And the beauty of it is we're talking about putting it all together, right? Like, if you get the reader right, the, the content creation is easy. Mm -hmm. The interactions is easy. This is just micropub and web engine. Right? That's all it is. Yeah. It's, it's pretty straightforward. It's just a bunch of little specialized micropub clients. And, and yeah, and it, it, you know, I've done it with Quill. We could, you know, the first version of the reader could just literally link out to Quill, right? It's one extra step, but who cares? It's small, and it gets you out the door, mm -hmm. right? The reader experience is the hardest part. And Woodwind is a thing that could be used. Um, but right now, I think Woodwind is more of a, a news reader than a, I don't know what I'm calling it. Social reader. Yeah, something like that, yeah. Okay. 
Cool. So am I the only one who's most excited about this, or would other people actually be like, oh, this is actually really cool. I'd like this. I would yeah. use this. I'm, I'm, I'm in to work on a reader if I'm not the only motherfucker working on it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It'd be interesting to see how to do it. Yeah. But yeah, it's a case of, it seems like I looked through the list of existing attempts, and they all seem to either be abandoned or yeah. just moving. So the question is why? Yes. That might be an interesting question to ask before embarking upon doing this. Why have all these other things failed so far? Because readers are the hardest thing to build. They're yes. a lot harder than a blog engine. Yes. Mm. And nobody's getting paid to do this. Yeah. I think it also might be because the readers are recreating Google Reader, right? Mm. Or recreating RSS Reader experience. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Mm. Or it's a lot on that. Right. Or it's. Here's your Facebook account. Here's your Twitter account. Right. Here's uh, Instagram. Right. Sign into all three separately, right. and then we'll just pull in all those feeds into one feed. Right. We we'll just smash them together. So it's not really like it feels like you have a specific user base of here are all these people doing indie web like posts. You you have all of it happening already. Yeah. It's just like no central way for someone to view something. I hate using the word central, yeah. right? but, but I think you understand what I mean. Yeah, it I'm, does. Yeah, but I'm not sure we, I mean, I almost proposed to talk about centralized tools for a safer decentralized web. Mm -hmm. um, I kind of don't think that a reader benefits a whole lot from getting centralized, but it is an option. Well, the reason that Google Reader was cool for people who loved Google Reader was the fact that it was centralized because it allowed there to be a network effect around this article is very, very liked, and as a result of this article being voted up, it bubbles up into the, it's trending, that kind of mm -hmm. trending notion. Mm -hmm. I kind of don't care about that. Yeah, maybe. I care about what my friends care about. Yeah. Um, and I think that's a better way of doing trending. It's like, I don't care what globally is trending. Who cares? Brands care about global trending. Right. I care about, I'm a person, I'm not a brand. I care, well, I'm also a brand, but. Um, yeah, exactly. Yeah, so you care about what's trending on your friend group. Exactly. Um, and even when you start to get into that, it starts to get into the place of it's not just friends, it's actually like groups of people kind of follow. So I could have a category for like, you know, my family. And then I have another category for like my friends who are sports fans or whatever. And being able to bucket these people and have that same kind of algorithm run against it and be like, in this group of friends, here's what's, here's what's going on. Right. right. So I, I put this in here, but I, I, I know Mastodon has kind of added this with their content warning labels. Mm. Um, but Google Plus, like one of the things that I really liked about Google Plus and the reasons why I wish it took off um, was that everything you shared, you could share to a specific group. Right. So you know, if you went partying on the weekend and you didn't want to share that with your parents, right. you could just share friends. Or if you had like a party, you could just share with the people who were at the party. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So it, it, you had a lot more control over your content. Um, so I mean, if we're posting publicly, you don't have that type of control, but at least you can group people of, yeah, so here are all my friends that are. I think getting the foundations for it, like again, you need the data to right. make, to get there. And so you put that in the MVP, the data, right? The easy part, which is, oh, this are the people I follow, and these are my categories for them. Mm -hmm. And then that enables you to do things like private sharing, like one-to-one -one sharing or group sharing, right? Even if you are putting it on your website, there are ways to do that, right? Um, but I think, and I am thinking about micro.blog being an interesting data point here, because in many ways, micro.blog is a reader. Mm -hmm for the indie web focused on two types of posts, realistically. Mm -hmm. right? It's focused on short posts, like a blog, and photos. And that's really it, right? Um, so I'd be intrigued to know if like, that might be a, uh, an angle <laughs> um, or not. Or you know, if you wanted to have a group of your friends to be, oh, my micro blog, my blog friends, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. right? That's a way, because getting a social network going is hard, like mm -hmm. the social graph, I mean, and, mm -hmm. and having like that be one is interesting. So that might be an interesting way to like go about it. Now, I know you are, uh, is, is your name Victoria? Yes. Oh, so <laughs> as, a, as a UX person, like this is kind of your forte of yeah, the discovery yes. section. So I'm kind of wondering yeah. if you have any, uh, any thoughts. Well, I was going to mention that. Uh, <laughs> 
I, I, um, I did a trial contract for Automatic on the WordPress reader where I yeah. actually came up with new UX ideas for them, uh, and I didn't actually get the job, but I could share those, um, some of those That's ideas great. Yeah, with you. Um, and it did generally, generally was trying to have an aggregated feed that had like a unified timeline of things where like, so the suggestions would be kind of like a different color and smaller, and only after you saw a bunch of like stuff you were actually following, mm -hmm. um, and um, and like that kind of had a business purpose where they wanted people to follow a lot of things right. as possible. But like obviously, for an indie web reader, you could you should be able to just turn that off or right. like you know total customization. Exactly. Yeah. Very cool. Yeah, auto, it's funny, WordPress.com does have a reader yeah. um, or WordPress.com content and other content, yep. I believe. Um, but it's not open source. Interesting. Though. Okay, yeah. I probably wasn't even supposed to like, talk oh, don't, about it. Don't worry. It's fine. <laughs> but it, we all know it exists. So if you, if you interviewed, it's no surprise. So. <laughs> but uh, no one's going to get mad, I don't think. Um, okay. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, so there is interest. There seems to be a common set of things that people care about, primarily that most of the readers out there now are to serve someone else's purpose and the users are kind of secondary to it, which right. is it's about advertising or right. brand discovery or whatever. And I don't care about any of those things. I care about, hey, what's my friend, what's my friend up to? What's my family yeah. up to? What are they thinking about that's interesting right now? Um, extra points if it works with Nextcloud. Yeah, extra points if it works with Nextcloud. <laughs> well, if it's a website, it works with Nextcloud. That's what Quill is. Well, that Quill thing is just an external link. Oh, oh. I have that set up. Okay. Yeah. Um, cool. Okay. Well, I think we have like 10 minutes left if anybody has any ideas they want to talk about related to this. We have 10 minutes left until there's 10 minutes left. 10 minutes left until it's, <laughs> you're supposed to adjourn and go elsewhere. Um, uh, but I don't have any, I mean, like I said, the content interaction side seems pretty easy to me, right? As long as there are enough people participating and who, when it's easy to have your own indie website, which is an indie web problem, that's not a this, that's, that problem is tick solved, right? Um, and it just has to support Micropub well. And your site needs to support web mention for interactions. Ah, one thing, uh, threading of comments. On, and on web mentions. So yeah. That's hard. Uh, that actually, yeah, when we were talking earlier about what, you know, what has evolved and like making comments and you were showing that, I mean, I'm old enough to remember when comments were the interesting thing about yeah. websites, you know, and you would read them. Yeah. And, you know, then people started turning them off because they were just. I hate that. They didn't even have to be like, just. They became stupid, you yeah. know, and they became too easy to like put stuff up and, yeah. and you know, I think um, when John Gruber stopped having comments that, I don't know if he ever even had that. I'm not even sure he ever did. He, yeah. you know, but people used to give him a hard time about yeah. that. And then basically everybody else was like, yeah. well, why should I have comments? Yeah. And I agree with some of the arguments, but only because things had gotten where they were, you know, but interesting you know, discussions, a lot of people found interesting people that way, you know, like that was where people congregated if yeah. people were interested in something, you know. Also, yeah, and social comments are a little bit of a different ballgame than, you know, comments on Daring Fireball. I think, yeah, there is a bit of a threshold if it's, I have a domain and my own site and I'm going to send a web mention to your site. Mm -hmm. There's a little bit more of an elevated mm -hmm. kind of threshold there. Because mm -hmm. you have to have a domain, right? Mm -hmm. And that's a pretty important piece of your identity, right? We've got vouch as well. Vouch is a, a, a thing that will hopefully combat spam and whatever, right? Mm -hmm. And it could it could literally be like you could have web if you have this notion of friends and followers, you could make it so your web mentions could only be from people you know, and otherwise they go into an approval queue that you have to go through and say yes. Mm -hmm. But that's more of a CMS side thing, I think. Mm -hmm. um, but it's, I mean, it's a really good point. Yeah, I mean, I, 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 just that, you know, 
people writing interesting or important work on the web being followed by you know some kind of reader mm -hmm. mechanism is great and everything but if that's where it ends then a lot of what's important about that you know like if a thousand people read it but they're all thousand yeah. in their own you know and oh. little silos like you know or it it really is uh something has, lo has been lost where you know those discussions don't take place anymore. it needs to be we need to enable more <laughs> vibrant conversation that used to be the case there was a, a brief period of time about four <laughs> to five years where there were people who were writing blogs in response to other people's blogs and they would track backs and thing backs and everybody was mm -hmm. you know having these conversations and you could follow from one site to another and it was nice it was kind of cool intelligent yeah. conversations happening on the web yeah. as it should be and now it's you know a whole lot of not that. <laughs> I mean, depending on the, the community that we're talking about, an, an example of where that still sort of lives uh, are Hacker News or Reddit. Yeah, I mean, true. some of the best parts of a large post is not the original post, it's the conversations right. that go on within yeah. that post. Um, so, you know, harnessing some of what works in those two sites I think would be something that makes sense. Mm -hmm. Good point. Um, uh, the, you know, another thing that's been interesting is civil comments, um, uh, which uh, I don't know if you could, who's in, uh, aware of that project, that company. I mean, it's a company, and uh, it, uh, they were, uh, for a while, they were being used as a service at our local alternative weekly, mm. the Willamette Week, and it was really... <laughs> I once went to the comments, I forgot that Sybil was on it, and I was like, oh, I'm reading a comment. I'm reading another one. And then I remembered, oh, right, because they have this this, uh, this service now. Well, I don't know, months later I went and I looked at it, and I was like, this doesn't seem like it's very Sybil again. And I checked in with uh, Krista, who's one of the founders, and she said, oh, yeah, they, they decided to stop using the service. It didn't really, I mean, it was too civil right <laughs> for an yeah. alternative weekly right. i don't know <laughs> well a lot of publications they're leaving comments on because that boosts the metrics yeah. you know, that they make money with so again yeah. social is a little bit of a different ball game yeah. there's going to be there's it's, there's not going to be a clear right line but and it, yeah, yeah in terms of things i'd like to avoid from social networks <laughs> right i'd like to avoid it be you know the kind of swoop uh, I'll call it the swoop and poop, right? Which is um, um, someone like your friend liked this politician on Facebook, and then my, you know, that shows up on my feed, and then somebody from my family or some friend of my friend comes in and swoops in and just poops all over the place, right? That's and and just writes a bunch of inflammatory and like I don't want that, right? So having when you have this kind of thing where people are connected, you get all the benefits of that, and you get all the downsides of that. So I do think getting back to the vouch thing is important. Um, and just building a model where it's not about broadening the reach as much as possible. It's about connecting you with actual people that you care about, right, mm -hmm. in, in, in meaningful ways. And different groups of people you care about, you're going to have different, like, you know, whether I care that five of my friends like something depends who my friends are. Right. You know, are they my work friends? Are right. they family members? I definitely don't care what they like. Right. And, and so on. Right. I think explicitly to me, like, this notion that if someone's going to interact with me on the web, I mean, we are, if, if things like web mentioning and, you know, micro, micropub get like critical mass, there is that danger of like people coming to my site and then just, you know, if I write a post about why I voted for Hillary Clinton, right, that could get dangerous real fast, <laughs> really fast. And that could happen today, regardless of a, a user experience. But the more that my content is, read and discovered, the more likely that that kind of thing can happen. So I do think it all does get back to like things like vouch and I mean, these are relatively solved problems in a certain respect. Like you can hide people, you can block people, you can hide people, you can, you know, moderate your comments, you can set up vouch, you can whatever. Um, One of the things that I really liked um, about control and stuff like that, and you see it on Reddit with downloading, um, I've seen it in some other places where um, you know, if you if you have enough people say record the post or download the post for, for whatever right. reason, you can have it basically minimized or deleted, and then you can set up something where you know if if too many comments 
were basically hidden or deleted in that way within a certain period of time that it would lock the thread so that it's not mm. just full of you That's know, interesting. hate posts. Yeah, I think those like community moderated spaces can be really good, mm -hmm. uh, depending on the community, right? Well, especially if it's if you do it in a way that it doesn't require a person. So, well, I mean, community moderated, I guess, yeah, if you have someone reading a post, but like not actually have someone else to sit there and read through everything. Right. Um, the systems, basically, mm -hmm. right. that respond to community moderations, right? right. downvotes and uploads, and whatever. Um, oh, sorry, I no, no, that's fine. That makes totally sense. Um, yeah, because Gene, that's going to be your job. So that is your job. <laughs> my job right now. Right. Oh, so, really? it's like right now, just, you know, we're, I don't like to publicize that we really haven't had any any problems with uh, things that needed moderation. Yeah. But that, of course, we wouldn't. It's yeah, it's three thousand Kickstarter backers yeah. and. Yeah. Um, well, I can post something inflammatory right now. <laughs> yeah, you'll get, you'll, you'll, you know, our algorithms will, will snap that right up. Yeah, there you go. Um, that just means that you're handing out those stickers to the right people. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that will become a problem at some point. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, and I, I mean, that's what I like about what, I mean, what attracted me to to signing on with Manton was that he was thinking about this before that that's first the post. Yeah. I mean, except for some beta users, yeah. like the first post <laughs> yeah. had gone out um, and trying and adding features in very, very, you know, judiciously yeah. and with an eye to like this will happen. You know, this will this um, adding this feature sounds great, except it also opens the floodgates for this yeah. kind of behavior. And then anyway, it's 350 uh, next action. Yes, so we should. I unshared my screen because you guys are all in the Etherpad, or most of you, some of you. Um, action promises or action items, right? Do you have a dark pink background in Etherpad? I'm. You could just make it lighter so it looks like. I'm dark pink, I think. Oh wait, no, I'm purple. Well, there's two different dark. It's Etherpad.indieweb.org. Slash if, together. If you click on the little button in the upper right hand corner. Okay. Um, I think. Yeah. As much as I would say that, that it would be great if we just like we're gonna start a reader project. Like I think more interesting would be to just explore some ideas, right? A reader. Maybe, yeah. I, I mean, starting with UX and not code. Yeah. At all. Exactly. Like draw yeah. up some ideas. Like maybe mock up some interesting things based upon, you know, the ideas that were shared here. So. Um, is there is there anything that Victoria could show us? <laughs> oh, um, it would be on the computer, so I can't like really do that right now. Yeah, no, no it's totally yeah, fine. Right now, it's totally fine. Yeah. But I, I think what would be a good space for us to iterate and think about these things? Would would the Indie Web Wiki be a place that we could do this, or um, would there be a better spot somewhere on GitHub, or I don't know what the best spot is, but a place to just kind of you know come up with some ideas. GitHub is not a bad. Yeah. Okay. I will create a GitHub project afterwards. Cool. Um, and I'll paste the URL here. Um, and then all will join the GitHub project. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and start sharing ideas, mock-ups, right? I do think that, you know, maybe some of us aren't, I'm not an artist, um, I'm, I'm, I'm more of a developer, but I have UX background and so I can definitely contribute some, um, but much more in the user experience and, and, you know, kind of flow than look how this button will look or whatever. Um, I can do that, but I'm not good at it. Which luckily is something we wouldn't have to worry about for a long time anyway. Well, um, <laughs> yeah. right. So this is actually well set up for, for this then because you're a UX, I'm actually UX as well. Nice. And you're a UX, so we can do yeah. hopefully some decent wireframing. Yeah, I think um, so too. As we all kind of bring ideas together. Um, Excellent. Um, and we should also um, maybe write, I will, I'll take a stab. Take a stab at writing a. I 
want to call it manifesto because that sounds like we're all huddled up in a, uh, a cabin somewhere in Montana. Um, uh, <laughs> we are in Portland, though. Portland is a great place for writing a manifesto. I've got to be honest with you. Uh, but like a... Uh, what would you call it? The ones where you have a would like, should have, must have. Oh, I don't want to call it a specification. Yeah. Um, oh, you know what? And so in, in product world, we have... Um, uh, we have a name for this kind of thing, and I'm trying to remember what it is off the top of my head. I'm on the spot, so uh, um, actually, I should know. What, hold on a second. I've got it in my uh, positioning positioning paper. So I come at it from a product angle, right? Which is marketing, not marketing, but the, the kind of notion of the user and the packaging of the thing, right? Um, How can I position it? Yes. Um, so I'll take a crack at writing a positioning paper, and I'll put that in the GitHub project. That'll be the, the beginning, right? Here's the positioning, and then we can change it all we want to. Um, does anyone object to me making it in, like, some plain text format? Is that okay? That's that's not great. Yeah, yeah, good. Good. yeah, Markdown? Perfect. I was going to use restructured text, but I'm a weirdo. We can use Markdown. Yeah. Uh, I don't even know what that is. Yeah, it's okay. <laughs> no, it's okay. John, uh, John Gruber, it's so funny. When he created Markdown, a bunch of people went to him and were like, why didn't you just use restructured text? It pre-existed. And he's like, oh, shut up. <laughs> yeah, exactly, that's exactly the right response to that. Um, it's like Markdown. But Markdown more. has a better name than restructured text. <laughs> you think? Yeah. As a product guy, I can totally appreciate why it didn't take off compared to um, perfect. Well, that's awesome. Well, thank you. Oh, okay. If anyone has like any pictures going around in their head of what this might look like, mm -hmm. you know, um, no matter like if it's with a crayon on yeah. a napkin, <laughs> just scribble something down, take a picture of it. Yeah. Um, because that will all help push us towards the end. I know people are kind of shy about yeah. showing that stuff, but I, I intend to put some stick figures up on there. So yeah. Yeah, cool. Nice. Uh, Very cool. Well, I'm glad this turned into an interesting. Conversation. I was like, I didn't know where it would go. And I'm glad you all guided us to something. It's awesome.